Hello everyone! Today I'm going to continue the stories of the great, great Sadiqim and Rabbanim of the yesteryear. And uh, actually, we're coming into the Chab Zayn Tammuz, the Hebrew date, which actually marks the passing of a, a very, very great rabbi back in, who passed away in 1963, I believe, Rab Yaakov Ades, one of the greatest uh, Syrian rabbis, arguably, uh, in history, in Jewish history. He was an incredible rabbi coming from a very, very illustrious uh, lineage. In fact, his father, Rabbi Abraham Chaim uh, Ades, was a great, great rabbi in uh, the city of Aleppo in Syria. And he actually had many, many Talmudim, many students, including Rabbi Ezra Atiyah and Rabbi Ezra Hamaway and uh, many, many other great rabbi man. was known as a very, very giant Chacham back in Syria. And they, they moved towards the end of the 1890s to the land of Israel. And I believe that Rabbi Yaakov Ades, his son, was uh, born actually in Israel. And uh, moved, I think, two, he, he was born two years after they uh, <coughs> made Aliyah into the land of Israel. And even uh, at a very, very young age, Rabbi Yaakov Ades started learning from his father, from Rav Abram uh, Ades, at a very young age. And in the year 1910, he went to Yeshivat or Hel Mo'ed, which was based in Yerushalayim. And in fact, he was, uh, became like a very, very uh, incredible uh, Torah scholar. But in the year 1914, World War I broke out, so there was like a few year gap in the Yeshivat where the, <coughs> it wasn't functioning properly due to those reasons of people being uh, drafted in uh, to the to the various armies at the time, so people fled. But he stayed in Jerusalem and uh, continued his Torah learning. And at the age, I believe, in the year 1919, while he was uh, aged at about uh, 21 years old, because he was born in 1898, he married a woman of the name of, of illustrious uh, descent, Chaya Esther. She was actually an, a daughter of another very very famous rabbi from Aleppo in Syria, of the name of Rabbi Ezra Harari Raful was known as a very, very great Chacham. And they both the sides, uh, both Rabbi Yaakov Ades and his wife, both came from very illustrious uh, heritage from both sides. Great, great Rabbonim. And they got married that, that year. And uh, in fact, Rabbi Ezra Harari Raful was the founder of the Yeshivat or Hel Moed, which was where he had studied as a young child. And uh, he got promoted, Rabbi Yaakov Ades, at the age of 22, became the Magid Shir there. And uh, this was going on for several years before he actually entered uh, the Yeshivat Porat Yosef after the Yeshivat Ohel Moed was uh, disbanded for one reason or another. And over there he taught for 20 years. Eventually at one stage he became the Rosh Yeshiva of Porat Yosef. And as I stated in previous uh, uh, speeches that Porat Yosef is a flagship, was the main Sephardic Yeshiva in the whole of Jerusalem at the time. He actually was there for a staggering 20 years, including being Rosh Hashim. And I believe at one stage, he was offered the position of becoming the chief rabbi of uh, Israel, but he had declined it at one stage in time because he was uh, very busy with other tasks. He was a great tzaddik and actually was known to sleep very little every night, only two hours. He would go to sleep, it was reported at 10 o'clock at night, and wake up for Tikkun Chatzot and would give le lectures to Balabatim, people that were learning and working at as early as 2 in the morning every single morning, and this went on for years. While in the yeshiva he was teaching the whole day, the book of Choshen Mishvat, with, uh, and many other, other things. He was teaching Talmud and giving lectures throughout the whole day. Very, very gigantic rabbi. At one stage he was, uh, I believe in the year 1945, he was part of the Sephardic Betin of Israel, and he actually had his own synagogue in Tel Aviv, a Syrian-based a Syrian community in uh, Tel Aviv in the 1940s, which was another staggering thing. And he was a Dayan also in 1945 of Jerusalem, and later he became part of the Bet Din Hagadol, and he served as a Dayan, and he was of Bet Din Hagadol, till he passed away at the age of 19, in, in the year 1963. I believe he was aged 65 years of age, and did so many great things. He was known as one of the greatest uh, Syrian rabbis, and there's many stories uh, connected to him. And uh, to see his sensitivity of the, the greatness of his, uh, of his character, that what a giant he was and how revered he was uh, in those days. It was actually a, a story, I believe, in the year 1945, in the 1940s, where there was uh, his, uh, the person he was learning with, who was teaching him, Rabbi Ephraim Menashe Cohen, who was actually a Talmud of the Ben Ishai, had passed away. 
and uh, this really, really touched uh, Rabbi Yaakov Ades. I believe this was in the, maybe year 1935, and he actually had a stroke he suffered from and fainted straight away when he heard these news. He was so sensitive to this. And uh, the, host, the ambulance came and uh, Baruch Hashem, he made the full recovery uh, very quickly. But that's how sensitive it was. There's another story that was written in a uh, publishing uh, paper that stated that uh, whenever he was going to write, be part of writing a divorce document or a get, he was always very, very careful. He even fasted on the day when he was uh, writing it because he didn't want to make a mistake. He was so scared he'd make a mistake. And that mistake he was worried could cost the wife that is being divorced from remarrying potentially or at a certain time period. So it was always very sensitive and fast, it took upon fasts upon himself that he won't err, uh, he won't make a mistake in his halachic ruling because you know the consequences for others will be great. And the favorite one was that I heard once that there was a man of the name, Mr. Damaskai, who was uh, one time he saw Rabbi Yaakov Ades and he said that he was walking with his three children and said to Rabbi Yaakov Ades, this is your three children to him. And the Rabbi Yaakov Adda said, how, how? So he says, you remember many, many years ago that uh, I was married to my wife for 10 years and I came to you, I begged you, what should we do? Have you got an uh, advice? We haven't had children, it's been 10 years. And he, he, this Mr. Damascus was even contemplating uh, separating so that he could, uh, maybe because it wasn't going to work out. So he pleaded, he pleaded, Rabbi Yaakov uh, Adda's pleaded him and said, no, 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 please give it, a, give, give, give it another year. And he even promised that, he, Rabbi Yaakov Adas promised he would daven at his father's kever because his father many, many times uh, helped people, daven for people and uh, for, especially for children. And he davened in his father's kever of the, uh, his father, Rabbi Abraham Chai Ades. And within a year, he had his first son, this Mr. Damaskai, and then had the second child shortly afterwards and then the third boy. So he had such gratitude to Rabbi Yaakov Ades because he went totally out of his way and davened and uh, handpicked his davening in the schut of him. And he, he was such a great rabbi. And uh, he passed away in the year 1963 on Chav Zayn Tamuz, which is this week, I believe, tomorrow evening from this recording. So it's uh, me, his, uh, his, his, all the schuyot, the uh, vast treasures of schuyot, he did all, and merits, he did all those years. Be like a schut for us in nowadays, where we daven, we should light candles for him tomorrow. It's a very auspicious day. It's his uh, hilula, his yard site, as they also call it. And uh, we, we do a lot of mitzvot and Torah learning, and it, the schut of that learning will be uh, helpful for him. And, you know, he left a great lineage of Rabbanim. Three of his sons, I believe, became a great Rabbanim. In fact, one of his sons, uh, another Rabbi Ades, he actually became the founder and the Rosh Yeshiva, I believe, of Yeshivat Kol Yaakov which is based in Bayit Vakan in Jerusalem, and that yeshiva is named after Rabbi Yaakov Ades himself, respectively. And also now, in, in, I believe in the year 1964, he had a grandson, also named Rav Yaakov Ades, who is known as one of the most gigantic uh, Rabbanim at the moment, known, uh, doubling nets every morning in the Kotel, doubling the whole time, known as one of the biggest Talmudei Chachamim in the whole world. He's actually, uh, we've got the schut of him, uh, living in Yerushalayim now and so many people getting brachot. So he left a lineage of uh, incredible Rabbanim, uh, Baruch Hashem, and uh, may it be a schut for us. I want to wish you all a fantastic day and uh, many, many, hopefully many more stories I'll be able to relate to with the great Oriental Rabbanim.